Gabriele Amorth made headlines around the world recently when he said the devil was present in the Vatican. You're talking about something very real, aren't you? Certo, realissimo. Vi dico se credete al Vangelo, credete all'esistenza del demonio? Absolutely, very real. As to the devil's presence in the Vatican, he says that's no surprise. He once had to perform an exorcism on another exorcist. The first thing we need to do if we're going to find out if the devil is at the Vatican is take a tour underneath the Vatican. As we arrive underneath the Vatican, we see that it is laid out in a number of rooms marked by letters, as we could see in this aerial view map. Now we will be exploring some of the rooms in this map. Let's start off by looking in room C here. As we look into the room, we see that this is a mausoleum of a Lucius Tullius Zethus. The Vatican goes on and explains that this room was used for offerings to the dead. We read, view of the north wall and mosaic floor in the corners of the mosaic floor, there are eight marble squares with circular holes through which offerings to the dead were poured during the funeral rites carried out in the burial chamber. So here we have a room where offerings are done to the dead. That's pretty common in Catholicism. Now if we look in the next room, room E, so here in this room they have a vase which has the image of a Medusa. So here underneath the Vatican, we have a Medusa. Again, we ask ourselves the question, this is a vase, but yet it's kept underneath the Vatican. This could have easily been removed. If the Vatican was a holy church, you would think that they would have done this. You think underneath the Vatican, they would have things that are sacred to Christ and not foreign gods not idols and images of foreign gods. Now as we move down further to room H, here we see that this is the mausoleum that is one of the largest and most luxurious mausoleums underneath the Vatican of St. Peter's Basilica. It says that it was built at the beginning of the second half of the second century during the reign of Emperor Marcus Aurelius and belonging to a freedman of the important Valeri family. And as we're in this mausoleum, we see that there's lots of idols from the old Roman Empire. We ask ourselves, why does Rome keep these idols down underneath St. Peter's Basilica? You would think if they were Christians, they would want to clean all this out. I can't imagine anybody who has a true church would keep idols in their churches, especially pagan idols. Where have we seen this before? Uh, it's a question I have to ask you. We see this also in Scripture where God gives Ezekiel a vision of what was underneath the temple during his days. Ezekiel 8, verse 5, They said unto me, Son of man, lift thine eyes up now way toward the north. I lift up my eyes toward the north. Behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry, he said, therefore unto me, son of man, see what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here. I should go far off from my sanctuary, but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. He brought me to the door of the court. I looked in the hole of the wall. He said unto me, son of man, dig now in the wall. When I digged into the wall, behold, a door he said unto me, go in and behold the wicked abomination. So here we go. He found a secret door, okay, a secret door that was, in a sense, underneath the temple, all right, uh, and he would see greater abominations, sort of like what we see under the Vatican. So he dug into the wall, and he went in, and he saw, behold, every form of creeping things, abominable beasts, and the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall roundabout. Doesn't this sound very similar? And there stood there seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel in the midst of them stood Jazania, the son of Shephran, 
and with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers, chambers of his imagery? Doesn't that sound familiar? So what do you think they do in these chambers under the Vatican? They worship these false gods, just like we saw in Ezekiel. Let's continue playing this here. Why is it protecting them? If it was a true church, it couldn't be doing it for the sake of art, especially with all the evil things that are happening in the Vatican. And as the priest earlier said that evil does exist, the devil is real, as he admitted. But the hypocrisy of all of this is that they have all these evil images and idols underneath the Vatican of St. Peter's Basilica. We also see two figures of genuses with bat wings also portrayed on the walls. Again, this is supposed to be a holy church and a holy place. Now this is supposedly all there for many, many years. As we move into the next room, room I, the details of the mosaic floor with Mercury and Pluto's chariot, they go on and explain that this theme is an explicit reference to the overcoming of death and the return of the afterlife. They describe it as a splendid mosaic floor of Mercury is depicted carrying a caduceus with wings at his ankles, walking in front, and a chariot carrying Pluto and his wife Persephone. So here we have all these Roman gods underneath the Vatican, images of foreign gods. Well, as we move to the next room, we find out why they keep all these idols down there in these images. As we move to room U, here we find the shock of all shocks. Here on the wall, it says there is a depiction of Lucifer, that is, the light bearer, the morning star. On the opposite of the wall, there is a drawing of Vesper, the evening star, cosmic symbol of the human life cycle. We find out that when we get to room U, here we have a clear depiction of Lucifer underneath the Vatican at St. Peter's Basilica. We ask ourselves, why are they keeping this image of Lucifer underneath the Vatican? Again, you would think if you're a Christian church, you would not want to have any of these images. Now we know that... Now, I was going to mention also that I've seen numerous videos of people saying they were taken under the Vatican for some sort of strange cultic ritual. And usually there were children, the ones that report about this, they're children that are brought into these rooms. And, I, you know, it's pretty unspeakable what they do in these rooms. Now, they say it's under the Vatican, but you know, I, I'm kind of curious if it's in these rooms or if it's in a a different room that we're not aware of perhaps like with ezekiel they have secret chambers and doors to other rooms that these are just the ones that have been made public that we know about and that there's actually other ones as well that are there that are even even more vile even worse all right now here is actually a very interesting uh, a picture of, I think, let me see what it was called. I forgot what they call this room, but you can see it has snake eyes and it also has this very abominable uh, display, which you can see right here. And this is where, you know, the Pope is sometimes at. I'm sure you've seen pictures of this. I'm trying to remember what they call this room. He mentions it. I think right here, audience hall, that's what they call it. Paul VI Audience Hall uh, is a building in Rome, seating capacity 6,300, designed 1971. And you would think if they have a room like this that, you know, they would want to glorify Christ, but instead what we have is some sort of fangs and eyes reptilian skin and this is why people say it's run by reptilians and then you have this 
horrible display here in the background. Looks like dead souls in, in hell or something. Uh, why would you make such a horrible thing? And why would you put that in allegedly a Christian place? So this is why it's such a joke. That this is not a Christian place. All right. That they'll go on and say, oh, well, we're saving it because it's a UNESCO heritage site or something like that. This is always their excuse, saving it for the sake of art. But for the true Christian, this is not an excuse because we know if you're giving glory and propaganda to false deities and false pagan gods, what are you doing? You're in essence supporting the evil spiritual realm. This cannot be from God. And since Rome claims itself to be the one true church, you would think they would lead by example. But what kind of example is this? That you have a depiction of Lucifer underneath the Vatican for countless hundreds and hundreds of years? Now this image here underneath the Vatican has been there since their claim, which would be Constantine. We would know that he was the first one that built this uh, basilica. And so again, we ask ourselves, why are they keeping this depiction of Lucifer underneath the Vatican? Well, we think the answer for why all these images, idols, are kept underneath the Vatican is because what we're dealing with here is we're dealing with an apostate church that has always been apostate. And even now, as it is filled with Freemasons, and so we know that the reason why they're keeping all this there now, and they're actually revealing this on their internet website, is because they want people to see this. They want people to see what they're really all about. For the masses who believe that Rome is still a pure church, they don't mind deceiving them into believing that they are still a Christian church. As you go down underneath the Vatican, down into the next rooms, they will try to convince you on this tour that you take that Peter is buried down there in one of the rooms and that this gives credence to following the Pope. But we ask the question, why would you want to follow a Pope who has all these evil things underneath his church? It's very clear. This is a very interesting point he's making. Uh, especially in light of, of Pope Francis, who is literally contradicting <laughs> every type of, of Christian teaching and including Catholic teaching. Uh, of course, I'm not a Catholic, but uh, the fact of the matter is he's mocking uh, the truth by putting uh, out things all the time that are contradictory to, to Scripture. He had a boy ask him where his father was. His father was an atheist. He asked him, is he in heaven? And he essentially didn't, he answered the question and basically said yes, but he said it in a roundabout way. He says, was your dad good? Yes, your dad was good. Well, where do good people go? I mean, such a, you know, simplistic thing like that. And I mean, of course, there was something years ago where he was saying atheists go to heaven. And, you know, you have to ask yourself, what, where is, what is this guy doing? I mean, it has nothing to do with uh, Christian teaching, it has nothing to do with the Bible. And he he just recently had Katy Perry. Let me show you that. Katy Perry coming to show how to do transcendental meditation. She's putting on a workshop. Um, let me see if I can find that real quick. Uh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Katy Perry, Pope, Virtuality, Technology, Meditation, and Vatican. Okay, so they're doing something about transcendental meditation. She was actually teaching a workshop in Vatican City on transcendental meditation. We all know Katy Perry's fake. She's a fraud. So why would why would they allow that? You know? Why would why would the exorcist get possessed himself and then another exorcist have to <laughs> exorcise the demon from him? I mean, seriously. Something clearly is wrong. I mean, You've heard all these strange stories. They also have a, a ton, miles of books that no one even knows what they are under Vatican. You have to ask yourself, why would they, why would it make it so it's inaccessible to anyone, or at least 
anybody that uh, would be, hist you know, like a historian or, or somebody that has an archaeological background, why wouldn't they allow these people in to investigate these documents? What are they hiding? I mean, miles and miles of this, of these books and ancient documents, perhaps there's something they're hiding within these documents, maybe things they've done wrong in the past. That's, that's the question you have to ask. It's just very strange, you know, why they have all these idols in underneath the Vatican in the basement. Why do they have all these records sealed that no one can read or see? Uh, these are the questions we have to ask.